English conversation on the topic fast food. Hi, do you like fast food? Hi, yeah, I love it. What's your favorite fast food? I'm a fan of burgers and fries. How about you? Pizza is my go to. Do you eat fast food often? Not too often, maybe once in a while. How about you? I grab fast food a couple of times a week. It's convenient. What's your favorite place to get fast food? I like the burgers at Bite Burger. You? Pizza Palace is my favorite. Do you ever feel guilty about eating fast food? Sometimes, because it's not always the healthiest. How about you? Yeah, I know it's not the healthiest, but it's so tasty. What's your usual order? I go for a classic cheeseburger and fries. Can't go wrong. How about you? I usually get a pepperoni pizza, simple and delicious. Do you like any fast food desserts? I love ice cream cones. And you? I'm a fan of apple pies. They're a sweet way to end a meal. Have you ever tried making fast food at home? Yeah, I've attempted homemade burgers. How about you? I've tried making pizza at home. It's fun, but not as easy as it looks. Fast food is convenient, but it's good to balance it with healthier options, too. Absolutely. Everything in moderation. If you ever want to try some homemade fast food recipes, let me know. Sure, that sounds like a great idea. It could be a fun cooking project. English conversation on the topic fashion. Hi, do you like talking about fashion? Hi. Yeah, I'm interested. What's your style like? I like casual and comfortable clothes. What about you? I prefer a mix of casual and a bit of a trendy style. Do you follow fashion trends? Not really. I just wear what I like. How about you? I try to stay updated on the latest trends. But comfort is still important. Where do you usually buy your clothes? I often shop at local stores. How about you? I like exploring different shops, both in person and online. Any favorite colors you like to wear? I'm into earthy tones like greens and browns. What about you? I love wearing blues and grays. They go with everything. Do you have a favorite piece of clothing? I have this comfy sweater I love. What's your go-to outfit? A pair of jeans and a stylish top. Simple yet versatile. How do you dress for special occasions? I usually go for something a bit more formal, like a nice dress. And you? I like wearing a suit or a dress shirt for special events. It gives a polished look. Have you ever made a fashion mistake? Oh, plenty. Like wearing mismatched socks. How about you? Once, I wore shoes that didn't match my outfit at all. It was quite a blender. Fashion can be tricky sometimes. Definitely. But it's all part of the fun. If you ever need fashion advice, feel free to ask. Thanks. I might take you up on that. Fashion is always changing. And it's good to share ideas. English conversation on the topic family values. 
Hi, have you ever talked about family values? Hi, not much. What are family values? Family values are the beliefs and principles that a family considers important. They guide how they interact and make decisions. What values do you think are important in a family? I guess love and respect are important. What other values do families often have? Many families value honesty, trust, and kindness. It's about treating each other well. Why do you think family values matter? I think they create a strong foundation for the family and help everyone get along. How do families pass on their values? Good question. Families often talk about their values, and parents lead by example. It's about showing what's important through actions. Can family values change? I thought they stay the same. Can they really change? They can evolve over time as the family grows and experiences new things. It's a natural part of life. How do you think family values affect individuals? I think they shape a person's character and influence how they behave towards others. Have you ever had a discussion about family values? Yes, during family dinners. It's a time when we share our thoughts and feelings about what matters most to us. What values do you appreciate in your family? I appreciate the emphasis on supporting each other. We're always there for one another. How about your family? We value open communication. It helps us understand each other better. If you ever want to discuss family values or share stories, I'm here. Thanks. I think it's a good topic to explore. Family values make families unique and special. Absolutely. They're like the glue that keeps a family strong. English conversation on the topic family. Hi, how's your family? Hi, they're good, thanks. How about yours? Everyone's well. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have one sister. What about you? I have a brother. Do you all live together? No, my sister moved to another city for work. How about your brother? He's still at home. We get along well. What do you usually do with your family? We often have family dinners and watch movies together. How about you? We play board games and sometimes go for hikes. What's your favorite family tradition? I love our holiday gatherings. We exchange gifts and share a big meal. Do you have a family pet? Yes, we have a cat named Whiskers. She's part of the family. Do you celebrate any special occasions together? Birthdays and anniversaries are a big deal for us. We celebrate with cake and gifts. How about your family? We do the same. It's a time for joy and togetherness. What values do you think are important in a family? I think love, understanding, and support are crucial. How about you? I agree. Trust and communication are vital for a strong family bond. Any funny family stories you'd like to share? Once, during a family vacation, we got lost and ended up in a small town. It turned into a memorable adventure. How about you? We once tried cooking a new recipe together. And it didn't go as planned. We ended up ordering pizza. Family moments like that are the best. Absolutely. It's those moments that make the best memories. If you ever want to share more family stories, I'd love to hear them. Sure, and you're welcome to share yours too. Families are full of stories and laughter. English conversation on the topic facts and statistics. 
high. Ever wonder how fast and statistics help us understand things? Hi, yeah, but I'm not sure how they work. What are facts? Facts are statements that can be proven true or false. For example, the Earth revolves around the Sun is a fact. Why do you think facts are important? I guess they provide accurate information. What about statistics? Statistics are numbers that help us understand trends or patterns. For instance, 90% of people like chocolate is a statistic. Why are statistics useful? I think they give a bigger picture and help us see how common or uncommon something is. How can we find reliable facts and statistics? Good question. It's essential to check trustworthy sources like scientific studies or official reports. Ever heard the phrase, don't believe everything you hear? Yeah. It means we should be careful and check information before accepting it. How do you use facts and statistics in daily life? We use them to make decisions. Like choosing products or understanding news, they guide our choices. Can facts change? I thought facts were fixed. Can they really change? Facts, like scientific discoveries, can change as we learn more. It's part of the learning process. Why is it crucial to question information? I guess to make sure it's accurate and not misleading. Questioning helps us get to the truth. Have you ever been surprised by a fact or statistic? Yeah, sometimes the numbers or information can be unexpected. It's interesting how they reveal different perspectives. If you're ever curious about a fact or statistic, you can look it up or ask someone knowledgeable. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. Facts and statistics seem like useful tools for understanding the world. English conversation on the topic ethics. Hi, have you ever talked about ethics? Hi, not much. What exactly are ethics? Ethics is about deciding what's right and wrong and how we should behave. It's like a guide for good actions. Why is ethics important? I guess it helps us make fair and honest choices. But how do we know what's right? Good question. It's often about treating others well. Being truthful and doing what's fair, have you ever faced an ethical dilemma? Yeah, once at work. I wasn't sure if I should report something I saw. What did you do? I reported it. It was tough. But I felt it was the right thing to do. How can we improve our ethical decision making? Maybe by thinking about the consequences of our actions. And considering how it would affect others, can ethics be different for each person? Yes, it can vary. But there are some common principles like honesty and fairness that many people agree on. Have you ever seen a situation where someone acted unethically? Yeah, I've seen people cheat in exams. It didn't seem right. What can we do to promote ethics? Lead by example. Show others what's right through your actions. Small acts of kindness matter. Why do you think businesses talk about ethics? I think it helps build trust with customers and creates a positive reputation. So, being ethical is good for everyone. Exactly. It's good for individuals, communities, and even businesses in the long run. If you ever have questions about ethical decisions, Feel free to talk to someone you trust. Thanks. That helps clarify things. Let's try to do our best to make ethical choices. English conversation on the topic environmental problems. Hi there. Have you heard about environmental problems? Hi. Yes. I think it's about issues like pollution and climate change, right? Exactly, pollution, deforestation, and global warming are some examples. Why are these problems important? They harm the earth and affect our lives. 
We need to take care of our planet. How does pollution happen? Pollution occurs when harmful substances like chemicals pour plastic into the air, water, or soil. It's not good for our health. What's deforestation? Deforestation is when trees are cut down in large numbers. It's a problem because trees help balance the environment. What's global warming? Global warming is the Earth getting hotter. Because of too many greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, it causes climate change. How can we help the environment? We can reduce waste, save energy, and plant trees. Small actions like using less plastic make a big difference. Why is it crucial to protect the environment? It's our home, and if we don't take care of it, we won't have clean air, water, or a healthy planet. Have you ever done something to help the environment? I recycle and use a reusable water bottle. Small steps, but they count. Do you think everyone should be involved? Absolutely. Everyone's actions, no matter how small, contribute to a healthier planet. It's a team effort. True. Let's spread the word and encourage others to take care of our home. Agreed. Every little bit helps. If you ever want more ideas on helping the environment, let me know. English conversation on the topic entrepreneurs. Hi. Have you ever thought about becoming an entrepreneur? Hi. Yeah, I've considered it. What exactly do entrepreneurs do? Entrepreneurs start and run their own businesses. They come up with ideas and make them happen. Sounds exciting. How do you become an entrepreneur? Well, you need a business idea, a plan, and the courage to take risks. Have you ever had a business idea? I've thought about it, but haven't come up with anything concrete. What kind of businesses do entrepreneurs start? It can be anything. Some start tech companies. Others open cafes or shops. It depends on their interests. Interesting. Is it challenging to be an entrepreneur? It can be. There are risks, and you need to work hard. But it's also rewarding. What skills do entrepreneurs need? I guess good communication, problem solving, and being creative would be important. Absolutely, and being able to adapt to changes. Have you ever met an entrepreneur? I think so. They seem passionate about what they do. Do entrepreneurs work alone? Not always. Some start solo, while others build teams. Teamwork can make a business stronger. Got it. Maybe I'll explore some business ideas. Any advice for someone starting as an entrepreneur? Start small. Learn from mistakes and stay persistent. It's a journey. If you have a passion, go for it. Thanks for the advice. I'll keep that in mind. Being an entrepreneur sounds challenging but exciting. It is. If you ever decide to start your own thing, I'm here to support you. Good luck. English conversation on the topic empathy. Hi. Have you heard about empathy? Hi. Yes. I think it's about understanding and sharing feelings. Right. Exactly. It's putting yourself in someone else's shoes. How do you show empathy? I listen when someone talks and try to understand what they're going through. What about you? That's good. I also try to be supportive and offer help if someone needs it. Why is empathy important? It helps build strong connections with others, and makes us more compassionate. How do you express empathy in difficult situations? I might say something like, "I understand this must be hard for you. Acknowledging feelings is important. Do you think empathy is a skill you can learn?" Definitely, it takes practice. But anyone can become more empathetic by being open-minded and attentive. Can empathy improve relationships? Absolutely. Understanding each other's feelings creates trust and makes relationships stronger. 
Have you ever experienced someone showing empathy to you? Yes, when I was going through a tough time. A friend listened and supported me. It made a big difference. It's powerful how empathy can impact someone. Let's practice more empathy in our daily lives. Agreed. It makes the world a kinder place. If you ever need to talk, I'm here to listen. Thanks. That means a lot. Same goes for you. English conversation on the topic email. Hi there. Do you use email often? Hi. Yes, I use it for work and staying in touch with friends. How about you? Same here. What's your email address? It's john.do at email.com. What's yours? Mine is sarah.smith at email.com. How do you write a good email? Start with a greeting, then write your message clearly. End with a closing like best regards and your name. Got it. Any tips for checking emails regularly? Set specific times, like in the morning and afternoon, to stay organized. Good idea. I sometimes get too many emails. How do you manage that? I use folders to organize emails by topic. It helps find things quickly. Smart. What do you do if you need a quick response? I write urgent in the subject or kindly mention it in the email. People usually respond faster. Great tip. How do you attach files to an email? There's usually a paper clip icon. Click that to attach files. Easy peasy. Perfect. Thanks for the info. I want to be better at email communication. No problem. It gets easier with practice. If you have more questions, feel free to ask. Happy emailing. English conversation on the topic electric cars. Hi, have you heard about electric cars? Hi, yes, I have. They run on electricity instead of gas, right? Exactly. They're more eco-friendly. Would you consider getting one? I'm not sure. How far can electric cars go on a single charge? It depends. But many can go over 200 miles before needing to recharge. That's not bad. How long does it take to charge them? It varies. Some can charge quickly in about 30 minutes, while others take longer. Interesting. Are electric cars expensive? Initially, they can be pricier, but you save on fuel in the long run. I've got it. Do they have many charging stations? Yes, they're increasing. You can find charging stations in many places now. That's convenient. I like the idea of helping the environment. That's a great point. Electric cars produce fewer emissions, which is better for the planet. I might consider one in the future. Thanks for the info. No problem. If you have more questions, feel free to ask. Electric cars are becoming more popular for good reasons. English conversation on the topic eating habits. Hi, how's your day going? Hi. It's good, thanks. I'm just thinking about my eating habits. Oh, me too. Do you have a favorite meal? I love pasta. It's so delicious and easy to make. Nice. I tend to snack a lot. What about you? I try to have healthy snacks, like fruits or nuts. Keeps me energized. That's smart. I sometimes forget to eat breakfast. How about you? Breakfast is a must for me. Usually, I have cereal or toast with jam. I should do that too. How about drinks? What's your go-to? Water mostly. It's refreshing. I avoid sugary drinks. Good idea. I love coffee, but I'm trying to cut back on sugar. 
You can try it with less sugar or switch to tea. It's a healthier option. True. I want to improve my eating habits. Any tips? Just try to include more fruits, veggies, and whole grains. Small changes make a big difference. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the advice. No problem. It's all about balance. If you ever need more tips, feel free to ask. English conversation on the topic dreaming. Hi. Do you ever have interesting dreams? Hi. Yes,、yeah, sometimes. Dreams can be weird and exciting. What do you think dreams mean? People have different ideas. Some think they reflect our thoughts and feelings. Others see them as stories our brain creates. Interesting. Do you remember your dreams often? Not always. They can be a bit fuzzy once I wake up. I get that. What's the weirdest dream you've had? Once I was flying on a giant pizza. It was so bizarre. That sounds fun. I dream of talking animals sometimes. Cool. Dreams can be like our own little movies. Do dreams have meanings? Some people believe they do, but it's not proven. It's like our mind's way of sorting through thoughts. Got it. Can dreams predict the future? There's no scientific proof for that. Dreams are more about our thoughts and experiences. Interesting topic. Do you have any recurring dreams? Yeah, I often dream of being back in school, even though it's been years. I've had those too. So, what's your dream job? I'd love to be a photographer. Capturing moments seems amazing. Nice choice. I dream of traveling the world one day. That sounds like a fantastic dream. What's stopping you? Just need to plan and save. Dreams can come true with effort. Absolutely. Here's to making our dreams a reality. English conversation on the topic disabilities. Hi there. Do you know much about disabilities? Hello. Yeah, a bit. Disabilities are conditions that can affect people's abilities in different ways. Oh, I see. What are some common types of disabilities? Well, there are physical disabilities like difficulty moving, and invisible disabilities like challenges with learning or mental health. Got it. How can we support people with disabilities? Being understanding and patient is important. Also, making spaces accessible and treating everyone with respect. That makes sense. What's the best way to communicate with someone who has a disability? Just like with anyone else, if you're unsure, you can ask them how they prefer to communicate, or if they need any assistance. Okay. Is there anything I shouldn't do? Avoid making assumptions about what someone can or cannot do. Treat them like you would anyone else. Thanks for explaining. How can workplaces be more inclusive for people with disabilities? Having accessible facilities and considering different needs, like providing screen readers for those with visual impairments, can help create an inclusive environment. Great advice. What about using appropriate language? Use person-first language, like saying a person with a disability instead of defining them by their condition. I'll keep that in mind. Anything else I should know? Just remember that everyone is unique, and it's essential to be open-minded and respectful. If you have questions, asking politely is always okay. Thanks for sharing this information. I want to be more understanding and supportive. That's fantastic. 
Just being open and willing to learn goes a long way. If you ever have more questions, feel free to ask. English conversation on the topic dating. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm great, thanks. Have you ever tried online dating? Yes, I have. It's a convenient way to meet new people. Cool. I'm thinking about trying it. Any tips? Sure. Be yourself and share your interests in your profile. Got it. What kind of things do people usually talk about on a first date? Usually, hobbies, favorite movies, or places you like to visit. Keep it light and fun. Sounds fun. And what about paying for the date? Some people like to split the bill, others take turns. It depends on the situation. Okay, thanks. What if the conversation feels awkward? Don't worry, it happens. Ask open ended questions to keep it going. Good advice. How do you know if a date went well? If you both enjoyed yourselves and laughed, it likely went well. Nice. So, when is it okay to suggest another date? If you had a good time, don't hesitate to say you'd like to see them again. All right. Thanks for the tips. Dating seems both exciting and a bit nerve wracking. It is, but just relax, be yourself, and have fun. Good luck. English conversation on the topic Happy New Year. Hi. I've heard people saying Happy New Year a lot lately. What does it mean, and how do I use it? Hi. Happy New Year is a greeting people use to wish each other well for the upcoming year. You can use it in the days leading up to New Year's Day and even a bit after. Ah, got it. So, when do people usually say it? People start saying Happy New Year on New Year's Eve. Which is the night before the new year begins. They continue to say it for the first few days of January. That makes sense. And how do I respond to someone who wishes me a happy new year? You can respond with thank you and a happy new year to you too. It's a friendly way to reciprocate the good wishes. Great. Any other common phrases or expressions related to New Year's? Yes. People often make New Year's resolutions. These are personal goals or changes they want to make in the coming year. It's also common to say cheers when making a toast, especially at midnight on New Year's Eve. Resolutions and cheers. Got it. What about fireworks and celebrations? Many places have fireworks displays on New Year's Eve. To celebrate the start of the new year, People also attend parties, watch the countdown on TV, or gather with friends and family to welcome the new year. Sounds like a lot of fun. I'm excited to experience my first New Year's celebration here. Anything else I should know? Just enjoy the festivities. And if someone wishes you a happy new year, feel free to share your excitement and good wishes too. It's a time for joy and celebration. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for explaining. And Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. If you have any more questions or need help with anything during the New Year season, feel free to ask. Cheers to a fantastic year ahead. English conversation on the topic Christmas. Hi, I've heard a lot about Christmas. But I'm not quite sure how people celebrate it. Can you help me understand? Absolutely. Christmas is a wonderful time of year. Many people celebrate it with their families and friends. One common tradition is decorating a Christmas tree with ornaments and lights. That sounds lovely. How do people usually spend Christmas Day? Well, on Christmas morning, families often exchange gifts. It's a time for giving and receiving presents later in the day. Many families gather for a special Christmas dinner with delicious food like roast turkey or ham. 
gift exchange, and a festive dinner. Got it? Are there any other traditions I should know about? Yes, many people enjoy singing Christmas carols. It's a way of spreading joy and festive spirit. Also, some families attend a midnight church service on Christmas Eve. Singing carols and attending a midnight service. Noted. What about Santa Claus? I've heard a lot about him. Ah, yes, Santa Claus is a big part of Christmas. According to tradition, he is a jolly man who brings gifts to children on Christmas Eve. Children often leave cookies and milk for Santa as a thank you. That's adorable. Anything else I should be aware of during the Christmas season? Well, many people enjoy decorating their homes with festive lights, wreaths, and stockings. It creates a warm and festive atmosphere. Also, you might see Christmas markets where you can buy handmade crafts and enjoy seasonal treats. Decorating and Christmas markets, got it? This all sounds wonderful. Any specific greetings or phrases I should use during the Christmas season? Merry Christmas is the most common greeting. You can also say Happy Holidays if you're unsure about someone's specific celebration. And don't forget to share good wishes like peace on earth or joy to the world. Perfect. Merry Christmas it is. I'm looking forward to experiencing my first Christmas celebration here. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions or need help with anything during the festive season, feel free to ask. Merry Christmas in advance. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you too. English conversation on the topic cloning. The concept of cloning is quite fascinating, isn't it? Absolutely. The idea of creating genetically identical organisms raises so many ethical and scientific questions. What are your thoughts on it? It's a double-edged sword on one hand. The potential for medical advancements in organ transplantation is exciting, on the other hand. The ethical concerns about cloning entire organisms are significant. That balance between scientific progress and ethical considerations is delicate. Have you followed any recent developments or breakthroughs in cloning technology? I read about advancements in cloning organs for transplantation. It seems like a promising avenue for addressing the organ shortage issue. That's a positive application. Using cloning for medical purposes could potentially save many lives. But I guess there's always the fear of misuse or unintended consequences. True. The ethical discussions around cloning often revolve around questions of individuality, identity, and the potential for exploitation. It's like playing with the building blocks of life. And those are significant concerns. It's not just about the science. It's about the impact on individuals and society. On a more speculative note, if you could clone anything, what would it be? That's an interesting thought. Maybe a beloved pet. If cloning were safe and ethical, how about you? I'd consider cloning endangered species. To help with conservation efforts, it could be a way to preserve biodiversity. That's a noble use of cloning technology. It could indeed contribute to ecological balance. On a different note, do you think cloning could ever be used for less altruistic purposes, like cloning humans for specific traits? It's a concerning possibility. The idea of designer babies raises serious ethical questions about playing with the genetic makeup of humans. It could lead to a host of unforeseen consequences. Absolutely, the potential for creating a stratified society based on genetic enhancements is a troubling prospect. It's like opening Pandora's box. And once the technology is out there. It's challenging to control how it's used. The ethical guidelines become crucial. Have you ever discussed the topic of cloning with friends or in a formal setting? Yes, especially in college during ethics classes. It's a topic that sparks intense discussions. Everyone seems to have strong opinions on the matter. 
It's one of those topics that can lead to passionate debates. The ethical and moral implications make it a complex subject. Do you think public opinion on cloning has changed over the years? I believe so. Initially, there was a lot of fear and skepticism, but as people understand more about the potential benefits and risks, opinions may be evolving. True, education and open dialogue are key in navigating the complexities of cloning. It'll be interesting to see how the conversation evolves in the coming years. Absolutely. The intersection of science and ethics will continue to shape the trajectory of cloning technology. It's a field that demands careful consideration and responsible advancement. English conversation on the topic cleanliness. Keeping things clean and tidy makes such a difference, don't you think? Absolutely. It not only creates a pleasant environment, but also contributes to overall well-being. Do you have any cleaning routines or tips? I'm a fan of the clean-as-you-go approach. It helps to prevent a massive cleanup later. Also, I find that setting a specific time for cleaning tasks each week keeps things in order. That's a smart strategy. Regular maintenance definitely beats a weekend of intensive cleaning. Speaking of which, do you have any favorite cleaning products? I'm a bit old-fashioned. I like using natural products like vinegar and baking soda for many tasks. They're effective and environmentally friendly. Natural cleaners are great choices. I've started using them more too. Have you ever done a major decluttering session? Yes, a couple of times. It's surprising how much stuff accumulates over time. I find it liberating to let go of things I no longer need. Decluttering can be therapeutic. It's like giving your living space a fresh start. How about public spaces? Do you think cleanliness in cities is important? Absolutely. Clean cities not only look better, but also promote a healthier and more pleasant living environment for everyone. It's a collective responsibility. True. It's something everyone benefits from. Have you ever been to a city that stood out for its cleanliness? Singapore comes to mind. The streets are immaculate, and there's a real sense of civic responsibility. It's impressive. Singapore is indeed a shining example. It shows how a collective effort can maintain cleanliness on a large scale, on a personal level. Do you find a clean workspace helps with productivity? Definitely, a clutter-free and organized workspace enhances focus and efficiency. I try to tidy up my desk at the end of each day. Smart move. It's amazing how a clean and organized space can positively impact work. Shifting gears a bit, do you have any cleaning habits from your childhood that stuck with you? My mom always emphasized making the bed every morning, and I've carried that habit into adulthood. It sets a positive tone for the day. Moms know best, don't they? Making the bed is a simple yet effective way to start the day. Have you ever had to deal with a particularly challenging cleaning task? Once I had to clean out an old, dusty attic. It was a challenge, but the satisfaction of transforming that space made it worthwhile. Attics can be tricky. It's impressive how tackling a tough cleaning task can be so rewarding. Well, here's to the joys of cleanliness and the satisfaction it brings. Cheers to that. May our living spaces stay tidy and our cleaning efforts continue to bring us peace and order. English conversation on the topic cities. Have you visited any interesting cities lately? Yes, I was in Barcelona last month. It's such a vibrant and culturally rich city. Barcelona is on my bucket list. What was your favorite part? The architecture is stunning. Especially Gaudi's creations like Sagrada Familia, and the food scene is amazing. That sounds incredible. I love how cities blend history and modernity. Speaking of which, have you been to any historic cities? I visited Rome a couple of years ago. The ancient ruins and the Colosseum were breathtaking. It felt like stepping back in time. 
Rome is like a living museum. Did you get a chance to try authentic Italian pizza? Absolutely. The pizza in Rome is unmatched. Now, I'm curious. What's your favorite city that you've visited? Tokyo left a lasting impression on me. The mix of tradition and futuristic technology is fascinating, and the street food is amazing. Tokyo is on my travel wish list. Did you explore any unique neighborhoods? Shibuya and Harajuku were highlights. The energy, fashion, and creativity in those areas are unparalleled. Have you ever lived in a city with a distinct culture? I spent a year in Istanbul. The blend of east and west, the markets, and the Bosphoru, it was a unique experience. Istanbul is known for its rich history and cultural diversity. Did you pick up any local traditions while living there? I got hooked on Turkish tea, and the concept of mess small dishes to share before a meal is something I brought back home. That's the beauty of living in different cities. The cultural exchange. Do you think you prefer the bustling city life or a quieter town? It's a tough choice. City life offers so much, but the tranquility of a smaller town. Has its own appeal. What about you? I enjoy the energy of cities, but there's something charming about smaller towns. They often have a close-knit community feel. True, and you get to know your neighbors in a way that's rare in big cities. Have you ever participated in a city's local festival or event? Yes, I joined the Holy Festival celebrations in Jaber. The colors, music, and joy were infectious. Holi in India must have been an incredible experience. Festivals really showcase the soul of a city. Any city you're eager to visit next? I've been dreaming of exploring Kyoto. The temples, gardens, and the traditional tea houses seem like a different world. Kyoto is a gem. The preservation of cultural heritage is remarkable. Well, here's to the many cities and adventures waiting for us to explore. Cheers to that! The world is full of cities, each with its own story and charm. English conversation on choices topics. Have you ever faced a situation where you had to make a tough choice? Yes, a few times. Making decisions can be challenging, especially when there's no clear right or wrong answer. How about you? Definitely. Recently. I had to choose between two job offers, each with its own set of advantages and disadvantages. That sounds like a significant decision. How did you approach it? I made a list of pros and cons for each job, considered long-term goals, and sought advice from mentors. Ultimately, I went with the one that aligned better with my career aspiration. Wise approach. It's crucial to weigh the options and consider the bigger picture. Do you believe in fate, or do you think our choices shape our destiny? I think it's a bit of both. Some things are beyond our control, but the choices we make definitely influence the path we take. How about you? I agree. While external factors may play a role, our choices and actions shape our personal journey. Speaking of choices, have you ever regretted a decision you made? Of course, there have been moments when I wish I had chosen differently, but I try to see them as learning experiences rather than dwelling on regret. How about you? Same here. Mistakes are part of life, and they often lead to valuable lessons. It's all about growth. On a lighter note. Have you ever had a tough time deciding what to order at a restaurant? Oh, all the time. The struggle between going with a favorite or trying something new can be real. It's a small-scale version of decision making, but it can still be surprisingly difficult. And of course, there's the fear of food envy. Absolutely, food envy is a real concern. But it's all part of the dining experience. Changing gears a bit.
Do you think our upbringing influences the choices we make later in life? Definitely. Our childhood experiences, values instilled by our parents, and cultural background all play a role in shaping our decision making processes. It's interesting how our early experiences can form the foundation for the choices we make as adults. Have you ever made a spontaneous decision that turned out surprisingly well? Yes. I once booked a last minute trip without much planning. It turned out to be one of the best vacations I've ever had. Spontaneity can lead to some of the most memorable experiences. It's refreshing to break away from routine every now and then. Absolutely. It adds a sense of adventure to life, overall. Choices, whether big or small, shape our journey and contribute to our personal growth. Well said. Here's to making thoughtful choices and embracing the journey they lead us on. English conversation on change topics. Change is inevitable, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a constant part of life. Have you experienced any significant changes lately? Yes, I recently switched jobs. It's been both exciting and a bit challenging adjusting to the new environment. That's a big change. How are you finding the transition? It's a learning curve, but I think it's good for personal and professional growth. Change often brings new opportunities. I agree. Embracing change can lead to unexpected positive outcomes. Speaking of which, have you ever initiated a significant change in your life? Yes, a few years ago. I decided to pursue a passion project that eventually became a side business. It was a major change, but it brought a lot of fulfillment. That's inspiring. Taking the initiative to make positive changes can lead to some of the most rewarding experiences. Do you have any tips for managing change effectively? I think staying adaptable is crucial. Also, Setting realistic goals and taking small steps can make the process more manageable. How about you? I've found that maintaining a positive mindset helps. Change can be daunting, but viewing it as an opportunity rather than a challenge can make a significant difference. True, a positive attitude can make the journey through. Change much smoother. Have you ever had to navigate unexpected changes? Definitely, life is full of surprises, and unexpected changes can be tough in those situations. I try to focus on what I can control and adapt to the rest. That's a good approach. It's essential to find a balance between embracing change and maintaining stability. On a broader scale, have you noticed any societal changes recently? The shift towards more sustainable practices. And awareness about social issues seems to be gaining momentum. It's encouraging to see people actively working towards positive change. Absolutely. It feels like there's a collective effort to make the world a better place. Have you ever been part of a group or community that aimed to bring about positive change? Yes. I joined a local environmental group that focuses on community cleanups and sustainable living initiatives. It's fulfilling to be part of something that contributes to positive change. That's fantastic. Being part of a community with shared values can amplify the impact of individual efforts. Change, whether personal or societal, seems to be a constant journey. It is, and with each step, there's an opportunity for growth and improvement. As they say, the only constant in life is change. Well said. Let's continue navigating these changes with resilience and a positive outlook. English conversation on the topic computers. Computers have become such an integral part of our daily lives, haven't they? Absolutely. It's incredible how they've transformed everything from how we work to how we entertain ourselves. Do you remember your first computer? Oh, vividly. It was a clunky desktop with a cathode ray tube monitor. The internet connection was dial-up, and it felt like a luxury back then. How about you? 
Mine was a hand-me-down laptop, it was slow by today's standards. But back then, it felt like a technological marvel. Do you think the rapid advancement of technology is a good thing? It has its pros and cons. On one hand, it brings convenience and efficiency. On the other, the pace of change can be overwhelming, and keeping up with the latest can feel like a constant race. What's your take? I agree. The speed of technological progress is astonishing. But it does create a digital divide. Not everyone has equal access or the means to keep up. Have you ever had a memorable experience? With a computer, like a major breakthrough or a frustrating challenge? I remember building my first computer from scratch. It was both challenging and rewarding, on the frustrating side. I've had my fair share of dealing with stubborn software glitches. Ever lost important data due to a computer malfunction? Unfortunately, yes, it's a gut-wrenching feeling, now. I religiously back up everything, it's a lesson learned the hard way. Do you think artificial intelligence will continue to revolutionize the way we use computers? Absolutely. AI is already changing the game in various fields. From healthcare to finance, it's fascinating to think about the possibilities. Although ethical considerations are crucial, as we move forward, what's your favorite use of computers in everyday life? I love how computers have made learning so accessible. Online courses, educational apps, and even virtual reality experiences. It's like having a world of knowledge at our fingertips. How about you? I appreciate their role in creativity, especially in graphic design and music production. The tools available now allow for incredible artistic expression. Have you ever tried your hand at coding or programming? I dabbled a bit in coding, it's like solving puzzles. And there's a certain satisfaction in seeing lines of code come to life. Have you ever been amazed by a specific technological innovation? The first time I used a voice-activated virtual assistant. I was blown away, it felt like talking to the future. Technological innovation has this way of making the impossible seem routine. Any concerns about the growing influence of computers in our lives? Privacy is a big concern. The more integrated computers become in our daily activities, the more data is collected. It's essential to find a balance between technological convenience and safeguarding personal information. What do you think the future holds for computers? It's hard to predict, but I imagine more seamless integration into our daily lives. Perhaps advancements in quantum computing and further strides in AI. The possibilities are both thrilling and a bit daunting. What's your wish for the future of computers? I hope for more inclusivity and access to technology and a responsible approach to AI development. A future where the benefits of technology are shared by everyone. Here's to the ever-evolving world of computers and the exciting journey ahead. English conversation on the topic communication. Communication is such a vital part of our lives, don't you think? Absolutely, it's the thread that weaves through every interaction, connecting us in ways both subtle and profound. How do you feel about the role of nonverbal communication? Nonverbal cues speak volumes, sometimes even louder than words. A simple gesture, a facial expression, or body language can convey emotions that words struggle to express. Have you ever had a moment where a glance said more than a conversation? Oh, definitely. There have been times when a shared look with someone conveyed understanding, support, or even an inside joke, bypassing the need for words entirely. It's like a silent language we all intuitively understand. It's fascinating how much emotion can be packed into a single look. On the flip side, though, have you ever faced challenges in communication? where words just didn't seem enough. Yes, especially in moments of intense emotion or when dealing with complex situations. It's during those times when finding the right words becomes a delicate dance. And sometimes they still fall short. How do you navigate through misunderstandings and communication? It takes patience and active listening sometimes. 
A simple clarification or revisiting a conversation later with a calmer mind can unravel misunderstandings. The willingness to understand each other's perspectives is crucial. Have you ever had a moment where the tone of your voice changed the entire meaning of a conversation? Oh, absolutely. The tone can be a game changer. It's not just about what you say, but how you say it. A kind tone can soften even the toughest message. While a harsh one can turn a simple statement into a battleground, do you think technology has enriched or complicated the way we communicate? Both, I think. Technology has given us incredible ways to connect across distances, but it has also introduced challenges. Misinterpretations through text messages, for example, are common. Emotions can be lost in translation. How do you balance digital communication with face-to-face -face interactions? It's a delicate balance. While digital communication is convenient, I make a conscious effort to have meaningful face-to-face -face conversations. There's a depth and authenticity in personal interactions that technology can't fully replicate. It's true. There is a certain energy and connection in face-to-face -face conversations that are irreplaceable. Shifting gears a bit. Have you ever been in a situation where silence spoke louder than words? Absolutely. Sometimes, silence is the most powerful form of communication. It can convey comfort, empathy, or shared grief. It's like a pause in the conversation that holds immense meaning. What role do you think empathy plays in effective communication? Empathy is the bridge that connects us. It allows us to step into someone else's shoes, understand their feelings, and respond in a way that fosters connection. It's the heart of meaningful communication. Well said. Empathy creates a space for understanding and shared emotions. It's the glue that binds us in the tapestry of human connection. Here's to the ever-evolving art of communication, weaving stories, understanding, and connection into the fabric of our lives. English conversation on the topic color. Colors play such a significant role in our lives, don't they? Absolutely, they have the power to evoke emotions, convey messages, and even influence our perceptions. Do you have a favorite color? I've always been drawn to shades of blue. There's something calming and serene about it. How about you? I'm a fan of earthy tones like deep greens and warm browns. They feel grounding and connected to nature. Have you noticed how certain colors can affect your mood? Definitely, when I'm surrounded by bright, warm colors, it lifts my spirits. On gloomy days, a splash of vibrant color can make a big difference. Do you have a favorite season based on its color palette? I love the rich, warm colors of autumn: the reds, oranges, and yellows. It's like nature putting on a show. Before the quiet of winter, how about you? Spring's pastel colors always bring a sense of renewal and freshness. The blooming flowers and greenery are a visual treat after winter. Do you think cultural background influences color preferences? Absolutely. Different cultures associate colors with various meanings and symbolism. It's fascinating how color perceptions can vary globally. Have you ever used color intentionally? Like in decorating your home, I'm a bit mindful of color psychology when decorating. I use calming colors in the bedroom and more energetic ones in the living spaces. How about you? I do the same. I want my home to be a reflection of my personality, and colors play a big role in that. Have you ever been to a place solely because of its vibrant colors? Yes, I visited a town known for its colorful houses. It was like stepping into a painting, and each street had a different color theme. It was magical. How about you? I once went to a colorful street market in Marrakesh. The vibrant textiles, spices, and ceramics created a feast for the eyes. Do you have a color that you associate with specific memories? The color yellow reminds me of sunny summer days during childhood. It's like a visual cue for happy memories. How about you? Deep reds remind me of cozy winter evenings by the fireplace. It's a color that feels warm and comforting.
Do you think fashion trends influence color preferences? Definitely. Fashion has a way of popularizing certain colors each season. It's interesting to see how those trends can influence not just clothing, but also home decor. Have you ever tried expressing yourself through unconventional hair colors? I haven't, but I admire people who do. Hair color can be a fun and creative way to express individuality. Have you ever had a favorite color that changed over time? Yes, as a kid, I loved bright, bold colors. But as I've grown older, I find myself gravitating more towards muted tones. It's like my taste has evolved. How about you? My preferences have shifted too. I used to prefer cool colors, but now I appreciate the warmth of earthy tones. It's interesting how our relationship with colors changes. Absolutely, it's a dynamic and personal connection that evolves with our experiences and perspectives. Cheers to the kaleidoscope of colors that make our world so vibrant. English conversation on the topic collectibles. Do you have any interesting collectibles? I've been into collecting vinyl records lately. There's something nostalgic about the analog sound, and the album artwork is often a piece of art itself. How about you? That's cool. I've been collecting vintage postcards. Each one tells a story and offers a glimpse into a different era. Do you have a favorite record in your collection? It's hard to pick a favorite, but I recently got a rare pressing of a classic rock album. The sound quality is amazing, and knowing it's a unique piece makes it special. What draws you to vintage postcards? I love the idea of holding a piece of history in my hands. The messages people wrote, the stamps, and the images capture a moment in time. It's like time travel through paper. Have you ever been to a collectibles fair or market? Yes, I went to a vinyl fair last year. The variety of records, the passionate collectors, and the chance to find hidden gems make those events exciting. Ever find a rare postcard at a market? I did. There was this hidden corner in a flea market. And I stumbled upon a box of postcards from the early 1900s. It felt like discovering a treasure trove. Do you think the value of collectibles is in the rarity or personal sentiment? It's a bit of both, I think. Rarity can add value, especially for serious collectors. But the personal sentiment attached to a collectible, the story behind it. Is what makes it truly special. What's the most unique item in your collection? I have a postcard that was sent from a famous historical figure. It's not particularly rare, but knowing it was once held and written by someone of historical significance gives it a unique charm. How about you? I have a signed record from a band that has a small cult-like following. The fact that it's signed by all the members makes it a prized possession for me. Do you display your postcards or keep them tucked away? I like to display them in vintage frames on a dedicated wall. It adds a touch of history to the room. How about your vinyl records? I built custom shelves for my records. The covers are like miniature art pieces. So I like having them visible. Plus, it's easier to pick out what to play. Have you ever traded or sold any of your collectibles? I haven't sold any, but I've traded postcards with other enthusiasts. It's a great way to diversify the collection. Have you ever regretted letting go of a collectible? There was a rare record I sold a few years ago. I needed the money at the time, but looking back, I wish I had found another way. It had sentimental value too. Any collectible you dream of adding to your collection? 
I've always wanted to find a postcard from a significant event, like the opening day of a historic building or a famous concert. It would be like holding a piece of living history. How about you? There's a specific album from my favorite band that was released in limited numbers with unique artwork. If I could get my hands on that, it would be a dream come true. Collecting is such a journey, isn't it? It really is the thrill of the hunt, the stories behind each piece, and the joy of adding something new to the collection. It's a passion that keeps evolving. Cheers to the collectors and the stories their treasures tell. English conversation on the topic cooking. Hey, I've been thinking about trying my hand at cooking. Any tips for a beginner like me? That's awesome. Cooking can be a lot of fun. First things first. Have you decided what you want to start with? Not really. I was thinking maybe something simple like pasta, but I'm not sure where to begin. Pasta is a great choice for beginners. How about starting with a classic spaghetti dish? You'll need spaghetti noodles, a jar of marinara sauce, and some ground beef or meatballs if you like. Sounds doable, but how do I know when the pasta is ready? Good question. You want to cook it until it's al dente, which means it's tender but still has a bit of bite to it. Follow the instructions on the pasta package, and you should be fine. Got it. Now, what about the sauce? Can I use a store-bought one? Absolutely. Many great meals start with a good store-bought sauce. Just heat it up in a pan while your pasta is cooking. If you want to get a bit fancy, you can add sauteed onions and garlic to the sauce for extra flavor. Nice. That doesn't sound too complicated. Any other beginner-friendly recipes you'd recommend? Another easy one is stir fry. You can use a mix of your favorite vegetables. Some bite-sized pieces of chicken or tofu, and a simple stir-fry sauce. It cooks up quickly, and you can serve it over rice. Stir-fry sounds good. What about seasoning? I never know how much to use. It's all about personal preference. Start with a little taste, and add more if needed. For pasta. You might sprinkle some grated Parmesan on top, and don't forget salt and pepper to enhance the flavors. I'll keep that in mind. What basic kitchen tools do I need? For starters, make sure you have a good set of knives, a cutting board, pots and pans, and measuring cups. A spatula and some mixing bowls will also come in handy. I think I have most of those. What's the easiest thing you say for a complete beginner? Something like a simple omelet is a great starting point. You just need eggs, salt, and pepper. You can add cheese, veggies, or even some cooked ham if you like. Omelet it is. Any last-minute advice for a cooking newbie like me? Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Cooking is as much about experimenting and learning as it is about following recipes. Enjoy the process and have fun with it. Thanks for the tips. I'm excited to give this cookie thing a try. English conversation on the topic creativity. Hi there. I've been wanting to explore creativity more. Any tips for a beginner like me? Absolutely, creativity is a wonderful journey. One simple way to start is by trying different hobbies, like drawing, writing, or even trying your hand at crafting. That sounds fun. I've always been interested in drawing. How can I improve my drawing skills as a beginner? Great choice. 
Start by doodling simple shapes and gradually move on to sketching basic objects. You can also find online tutorials or art classes for beginners to pick up some techniques. Got it. What if I want to express my creativity through writing? I'm not sure where to begin. Writing is a fantastic way to express yourself. Start by keeping a journal, write about your day, your thoughts, or even create short stories. It's a great way to practice and find your writing style. Journaling sounds interesting. Are there any specific writing techniques I should know as a beginner? Sure, you can start with free writing. Set a timer for a few minutes and write whatever comes to your mind. Don't worry about grammar or structure, just let the words flow. That sounds freeing. I'll give it a try. How about if I want to get into crafting? Crafting is a fantastic way to explore your creative side. You can start with simple projects like making greeting cards, origami, or even crafting with recyclable materials. There are plenty of easy tutorials online. Origami sounds intriguing. Where can I find simple origami tutorials for beginners? YouTube is a great resource for origami tutorials. You'll find step-by-step -step guides for various origami creations. Just start with something basic, like a paper crane, and go from there. Perfect. I'll check those out. How do you stay inspired and motivated to be creative? Inspiration can come from anywhere nature, books, movies, or even everyday experiences. Keep an open mind and don't be afraid to try new things. Surround yourself with things that inspire you. I'll keep that in mind. Sometimes I worry about not being good enough. Any advice on overcoming that? It's normal to feel that way, especially as a beginner. Remember that creativity is a journey, not a destination. Don't compare yourself to others. Embrace the learning process, and most importantly, enjoy what you're doing. Thanks for the encouragement. I'm feeling more excited about exploring my creativity now. That's the spirit. Whether you're drawing, writing, crafting, or trying something new, the key is to enjoy the process. Happy creating. English conversation on the topic customs. Hi, I'm new to this country, and I'm curious about the customs here. Can you tell me more about them? Of course. Welcome. Well, customs are the traditional practices or ways of doing things that are common in a particular culture. For example, greetings are an essential custom. People here often shake hands and say hello when they meet. Got it. What about meals? Are there any specific customs I should be aware of when dining? Absolutely. In many places, it's common to wait for everyone to be served before starting to eat. Also, using utensils like forks and knives is typical, though some cultures might use chopsticks. And don't forget to say please and thank you. Good to know. What about social gatherings? Are there any customs I should be mindful of? Definitely, when invited to someone's home, it's polite to bring a small gift or dessert. It shows appreciation for the invitation. Also, making small talk and asking about the other person's well-being is considered friendly. That's helpful advice. I don't want to unintentionally offend anyone. Speaking of which, are there any customs regarding personal space or touching? Yes, that's important too. Different cultures have different comfort levels with personal space in general. It's a good idea to respect people's personal space and not stand too close, unless you're familiar with them. Noted. I don't want to invade anyone's space. What about clothing? Are there customs related to that? Clothing customs can vary. But it's always a good idea to dress modestly, especially in formal or religious settings. For example, wearing more conservative clothing when visiting a place of worship is a common practice. I'll keep that in mind. Any other customs I should be aware of in daily life? 
Well, punctuality is often valued. Being on time for appointments or meetings is considered respectful, also. Standing in line and waiting your turn is a common custom in many places. Great to know! I appreciate these insights. It helps me feel more comfortable navigating the local customs. You're welcome. If you ever have specific questions or encounter something you're unsure about, feel free to ask. People here are generally understanding and happy to help newcomers. Thanks for being so welcoming and helpful. I look forward to embracing these customs and getting to know the community better. You're very welcome. If you have any more questions or if there's anything else I can help you with, just let me know. Enjoy your time here.